In the far reaches of our universe, in places so cold and isolated that the human mind can barely grasp their profundity, a rare and fascinating phase of matter stretches our understanding of physics and reality itself. Imagine, if you will, a substance so peculiar it defies the very principles that govern the world as we know it, where the laws of classical physics break down, where individual particles relinquish their separate identities to become one. This is no science fiction, neither a solid, gas, liquid or plasma, this fifth state of matter is the realm of Bose-Einstein condensates. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and in this week's video, I'll be talking about how Bose-Einstein condensates could revolutionize our understanding of dark matter, the cosmic microwave background and the very origins of our universe. So let's begin. So the week before last, I had prepared a video on the trending ambient environment superconductor, explaining what it is and the revolutions it would bring to our lives. Unfortunately, the discovery turned out to be a dud, so I decided to skip. But if you're still interested, you could still convince me to post it. Just comment below and let me know. Now, the topic of this week's video is another potential revolutionary substance, the Bose-Einstein condensate. A superconductor is a material that has zero electrical resistance. This means that an electric current can flow through it without any loss of energy, which is really useful for a range of applications, including MRI machines and maglev trains, but they typically require cooling to sub-zero temperatures. Bose-Einstein condensates, or BECs for short, similarly are an extraordinary state of matter that exhibit fascinating quantum mechanical properties when cooled to extremely low temperatures. However, the two are very different phenomena. Bose-Einstein condensates can occur in any material that have boson atoms. Recall that there are five types of elementary bosons, which are the Higgs boson, photons, gluons, the W boson, and the Z boson. When the particles of the material are cooled to extremely low temperatures, close to absolute zero, they begin to slow down. They condense into the lowest quantum state and they become indistinguishable from one another. They have the same energy and the same momentum. The particles enter into a quantum state of collective existence, not as an individual particle, but as a single entity. Their quantum mechanical wave functions overlap and they begin to act like a single giant wave. Bose-Einstein condensates have a number of unique properties, including superfluidity, i.e. the ability to flow without friction, and quantum coherence, the ability to maintain their wave-like properties even when they're separated by large distances. First predicted by Satyendra Nath Bose and Albert Einstein in the early 20th century, they weren't actually observed until 1995 when they were created in a lab so it's still a relatively new field of research. Right now, the applications are mainly experimental and research-based, but they could be used to make ultra-sensitive sensors for atomic lasers and atomic clocks and other precision measurements, or for quantum computing. If you want to build a quantum computer, you've got to get all of your qubits, those tiny bits of quantum information, to start off in the same state. Think of a Bose-Einstein condensate as a sort of quantum choir, where every atom is singing the same note. But because all the atoms in a BEC are vibrating at the same quantum state, it could be a promising foundation for setting up the initial conditions required for quantum computation. But BECs also have endless applications in the domain of space and astronomy. Vortices can be made within them using lasers as stirrers. And then these can be used as analog black holes to study them in the lab. In 2018, the International Space Station installed the Cold Atom Laboratory, a facility that uses lasers to cool atoms down to less than a degree above absolute zero, creating the first BEC in space. Now on Earth, BECs can typically only last for fractions of a second before they fall apart due to gravity. In microgravity, however, on the ISS, 
These condensates can be studied for much longer, allowing for more detailed analyses. Their early results showed about half of the atoms would form into this magnetically insensitive halo-like cloud around the main body of the BEC. It seems that BECs are affected by gravity, but not in the same way as ordinary matter is. This makes it ideal to help us understand the fundamental properties of gravity and the laws of physics. It's quite conceivable that BECs naturally occur in the ultra-cold depths of space, and some theories even propose that dark matter could consist of these ultra-cold particles that behave in ways similar to atoms in a BEC. Although axions, a dark matter candidate, have not yet been proven to exist, Theories suggest that axions interact with each other through gravity, and these interactions eventually would lead them to thermalize and form a BEC. BECs also play a role in understanding the cosmic microwave background, the CMB, the afterglow of the Big Bang. If certain particles in the early universe formed a BEC-like state, they might have influenced the CMB in ways that could offer new perspectives on the birth of the universe. The research on BECs is a rapidly growing field and there are so many exciting discoveries still to be made. As our understanding of BECs grow, we may even be able to use them to create new and amazing technological advances that will change the way we live and work. That's all for this week's video. As always, thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. Please consider joining if you haven't already. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.